Billy. Mm-hmm. I almost lost you on the last episode. Well, considering maybe it wasn't the last episode, but the last the last episode, time I saw you. Last time you saw me. Last time I saw you, almost lost you. Yeah. And you was out of there for maybe 1.8 seconds. Listen, let me tell you, I was out on my feet. On your feet, yeah. Cause, cause I saw, I saw you talking. I was, yeah, I hear, I saw the story, and I saw you going to the light. Let me tell you what happened in the light. Whatever the story you was telling me, I started. Seeing you started it. to see that thing ever I, so clear. I saw it, and then I didn't even my eyes open because I'm in the story in the light. And God yes. thought he was out of here. Let me tell you what it is. Simo yelled it out during the thing. Oh, so when you smoke it through your nose, you get higher. You goddamn right, you get yeah. higher. Yeah, yeah. That is the direct connect, bro. When you hit that shit through your nose, yeah, I'm getting there. I, I niggas thought I was probably on heroin or morphine. Or, or, or a lean or something. No. No, he was not. That's straight THC contact. You niggas all that talking about, oh, I smoke big dope. No, nah, you don't. come to Cali. Hit it through your nose, motherfucker. And come to Cali and get that shit too. That's straight inhale. You can't bypass that. Oh, Billy ain't inhaling. Yeah. Yeah. Billy, Billy, you put, can't, I'm plugged in, motherfucker. You can't discount that. Billy doing what he doing. But I looked over and I said, Billy's almost out of here. Mix with that Patron. That I mean, was the, or that Don Julio, my yeah, friend. Billy, they thought I forgot at home. Mm -mm. There's a nigga at home right now with a blunt scene. What the that fuck they doing? doing, man? What the fuck, fuck they, they doing? doing? Ernest! Yo. Simo! What up? They thought we could do it without y'all. Mm -mm. Fellas, let me tell you something. I need y'all. Because I walked you? into this set angry. Yeah. <laughs> I walked on this set angrier than a little bit. But you know why you shouldn't be angry? Why? Because it's fucking Christmas. Goddamn right it's Christmas. Who mad on Christmas? A Nobody. nigga don't get shit. A nigga that don't get shit is hot. You know what? Billy, it just brought me to a position in my life. What is that? When it made me reminisce. It literally just hit me. Mm. Take us there. I remember the wildest emotional Christmas I've ever had. Mm. Billy, I'll never forget. Grew up poor. You know, I grew up poor and half shit. Yeah. Me and my sister, we live with my grandmother. And um, some Christmas, you might have a tree up. Right. Some Christmas, you might not have a tree up. Right. Well, <clears throat> when I started realizing the pattern of this, I said, well, God damn it, I gotta, I need to start doing something. Right. It's my 10th birthday. Yeah. 10th year. Mm. Me and my sister said, we're going to do something different. Spice it up this year, huh? We're going to spice it up at a Christmas tree. So what we did was my grandmother, very strict. You know my grandmother, they play in zero games. Right. She really did. I think my, my grandmother didn't give a fuck no. about nothing. Most people in charge don't. She didn't give a fuck. You know why? Because she's responsible for shit. Yeah. The person that's responsible usually don't give a fuck. Right. My grandmother really don't give a fuck. So I'm like, okay, cool. This is what it is. Me and my sister are going to spice it up. Right. It's a bunch of people in the house. Mm -hmm. There's about nine, ten motherfuckers live there. Yeah. Me and my sister decided we're going to give everybody in the house a gift. Mm -hmm. Tell you how we're going to do it, Billy. We're going to get shit that's already in the house mm -hmm. and wrap it. Put that shit under the tree. And that's the goddamn gift. Ashtrays, mm -hmm. bowls, spoons, all kind of shit that's in the house. That is the that is the the most poorest, mm -hmm. most genuine, heartfelt thing I think I ever heard. What are we gonna do? It's definitely some shit to do when you're poor. There we go. Billy. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna change this family, Daphne. Oh man. I told my sister. Daphne, we changing this family today. We're gonna get everybody gifts. Now, let me break down a couple of characters to you that you may not know. Now my uncle Fremo who's the man I look up to. Yeah, free man. Respect him the most. Yeah. Man, loved him. He hustling, doing his thing. And this is another guy in, in this story you need to know. His name is Mr. Joe. Okay. Now, Mr. Joe is about 65, got a good job right. from the, at the plant, but he, he do lawn work on the side. Yeah. And he fucking my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking her. Yeah. I know he fucking her. How you know? I'm glad you asked. Billy, the reason why I know he's fucking my grandmother, when he comes, he has a Buick LeSabre. Yeah. That son of you a bitch. You got a year model on that thing? 
Ah! Don't make me lie on Mr. Joe. But just know that son of a bitch yeah, is always range. clinch. It's like a... Probably like a... It's an 80-ish model. 80-ish model. Early 80s. Okay. Early we'll 80s. Take, we'll take that. Right? And he has this lawn equipment with him. And sometimes he'll drive a truck. Sometimes when he come over in the smooth shit, that's he when he fuck my grandma. grandma. Okay, I see what you When saying. he come over in the Buick Sabre, he's fucking my grandma. When he come over the lawn shit, he, he doing shit. He to does keep work. Fucking, to keep fucking you, grandma. To keep, you know, to keep on fucking because he's giving her some money. $20, $30. She getting dick. Yeah. So I said, you know what? And how old is he again? 60? He's in his 60s. He's in his late 60s. A hard dick in, in your 60s back then before. That's Viagra. good. You're doing good. If you could throw dick in the say, oh, you're doing really good. So Mr. Joe, this is how I know he's fucking my grandma. So Mr. Joe would come in, he'd do the same thing every time he come in. I'd be sitting on the couch, right? Yeah. He'd walk in and, all right now, boy, don't say shit to my grandma. They act like they don't even know each other. Uh-huh. They act like they ain't even fucking. Yeah, what'd he tell you? He'd walk in there. Hey, that boy, gonna take a run with me? I'm like, yeah, Mr. Joe. All right, shit. Come on now. Keep on up. I'm, I'm gonna let you drive. Keep on growing like that, I'm gonna make you drive. Mm-hmm. Now he just stroking me, nigga. I didn't hear the growth spurt until I was like, 15, I was just a little bitty boy, but he's stroking me. Even more reason why I know he fucking my grandmother because he's stroking me too much. Yeah. We get that, that boy go in there, he get cool menthols, 100 for my grandmother, mm -hmm. and a pint of gin oh, man. for my grandmother. He getting all this, he was, he was doing, getting turn up shit for my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> he got turn up shit. <clears throat> bumpy face gin. God, that Seagram's fucking bumpy. Cool hundreds, cool menthol 100s. And he tell me, what well, gonna get what you want? Nah, I'm a little boy. I ain't gonna get that much. I ain't getting more than like ten dollars worth of shit. But you getting some shit. But I'm getting some shit. Honey buns. Honey buns. Fucking Snickers. I know my sister like Snickers. I'm getting shit for her. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm getting a whole bunch of shit. This is cool, right? Yeah. And when I get my shit, he get in the car, take me back home. Now here's the deal: when you get your little snacks, little nigga, beat it. Go get somewhere. Get out of here. Yeah. Mister Joe's getting me out of here, right? So one day I said, you know what? I'm going back in there. Mm -hmm. I got to see what they're doing. Okay. You being defiant. Got an idea, Billy, but I need to see it to verify it. Yeah. I need concrete evidence. Mm -hmm. Billy, I go in there, and before I can even get, because the door closed. Now, my, I, the door to our front door is always open. It don't close until nighttime. Wait, wait, the door, your front door is Our front door is always, always open. open. Okay. It ain't never closed during the day. It's always open. Okay. It's closed this day. Okay. I go in. I hear, <laughs> so my grandmother's yeah, door, that, hey, bro, hey, man, I'm calling it how it is, bro. I really experienced this. This ain't no goddamn bullshit. I really experienced this. My grandmother had that door, and she had like a skeleton key that goes in it, right? Now, if you got a skeleton key. That's an old-ass Louisiana house. It's an old-ass house, and you got room to see through that door. So I said, fuck that. You looking through the key. I got down on one knee, and I closed one eye, and I started looking at it. He, 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 he. This nigga is chunking all kind of dick in my grandma. <laughs> He's running through her. I'm like, oh my God, let me get the fuck up out of here. I didn't seen enough. I get the fuck out of there, right? Yeah. Now, this day, he drives in his truck, Yeah. right, with all this shit on there. Uncle Fremo, hustler, sees it, swipes the shit. Come on, Fremo. Five weed eaters. Five weed eaters is what's in the back. Gone. When you finish fucking, you ain't in your right state of mind. You just drive off. You drive the fuck off. It's nighttime anyway. You came when it was daytime. You been fucking my grandmother from day to night. <laughs> you get up out of there. You drive away, you don't realize till you get ready to cut grass again that you ain't got this shit. Oh, man. It's Christmas Day. Yeah. Right? Now, Fremo didn't hear the shit under our house. We had a shotgun house. Oh. He didn't hear our shit wrapped up in some sheets under the house, right? We wake up in the morning, right? Everybody's happy. I got, we got a bunch of gifts under that bitch. Me and my sister didn't provide it. Oh, <laughs> we got nothing but gifts. We, we stocked the tree. Yeah. We did it. We broke records in this bitch. You ain't never seen gifts like that. And my grandma was like, who done put all these goddamn gifts? I know. She can't figure it out, right? But she looking at them and all of them from Dee Dee and Daphne. Dee Dee and Daphne. Dee Dee and Daphne, right? Get up, we start opening up gifts. Now, this is the first time I ever got my ass whooped on Christmas. <laughs> my grandmother opens up her gift, 
is her ashtray that she's been looking for for two weeks. <laughs> what the fuck this been? I've been looking, come here. Pop, slaps the shit out of me, whoops Daphne. Yeah. Right? I'm like, oh my gosh, how you get your ass whipped on Christmas? On Christmas Day. Cool. Give him a gift. Fremo comes, give, I'm trying to give. Fremo comes in, mad than a motherfucker. On Christmas Day. I know who did it, when nobody but Bebo, when nobody but Bebo took my motherfucking weed eaters that's under that motherfucker, that's under the house. They get into a scuffle, they fighting. Fremo and Bebo, Uncle Roo, Bebo, Bebo's uncle roommate. Uncle roommate, yeah. They fighting, they getting into it heavy. Fighting like a motherfucker. Over these, over these. Over this stolen ass five weed eaters from Mr. Joe that's been fucking my grandmother. This shit, my grandmother breaks the shit up. Yeah. All right? House is in disarray. Yeah. All these gifts ain't real gifts. The shit my sister and I didn't came up with. Yeah. Bebo, Fremo, mad at each other. He feel like his brother stole his shit. Right. We got a back door. Mm-hmm. It's a shotgun house, yeah. but then it's a back door, a side door. Right. Coming through the back door, black gal. Black gal. It's getting interesting. Black gal comes in. Black gal comes in. Okay. Hey, y'all. Happy dinner, motherfucker. High as fuck. We know she been cracking it out. Mm -hmm. She been cracking it out probably the last three or four days. Yeah. It's Christmas time. Yeah. Got to smoke crack on Christmas. Everybody giving money. You got to smoke crack on Christmas. She coming in, bitch. Hide him. Hey, y'all. What's going on? Give me $20. Give my sister $20. Nigga, I'm happy because this is my first real gift. You got $20. I got 20 motherfucking dollars. Oh, my God. My, and my grandmother, Emma Lee, mm -hmm. say, uh, Black Gap, now where you coming from and where you get money from? My friend gave me money, and then I sold them weed eaters. <laughs> oh yeah, there it is. What? Yeah. Sold weed eaters. Mm-hmm. What y'all need? Fremo said, "Then my goddamn weed eaters." Yeah. Give me all that goddamn money. He said, "I guess I can give you all the money. I give you some of it, but I'm not give you all the money." Mm -hmm. She said, "Ladidi, he go another twenty. She mm -hmm. hand me another twenty. I said, I appreciate that, nanny. I really do. Make and up she, all the fuck shit you did. For all the fuck shit you did. And she looked me dead in my eyes and she said, Did you miss me? God damn it. Took, Took your ass around the world. And dropped, world. Off. and dropped their ass off, man. It's Did You Miss Me? I'm delay. I'm Billy Sorrells. Man, it's the hottest storytelling podcast in the game. And you in, you in, the, you in the midst of us. And it's Christmas. You, you damn sure right it's Christmas. You know what, Didi? You tired of talking about a good Christmas. I'm gonna tell you a tale of two Christmases. Mm. I saw Christmas two different ways from these two different Christmases. The first Christmas was uh, in the glory years. I call them the glory years when my parents were still together. Let me tell you something about my mom and my daddy during Christmas. They turns the fuck up. Mm. They, they, they was the young couple that had their shit together that had everybody come over. So all their friends who was living in Tennessee, it's, it's popping, you know? I'm from Chattanooga, I was born there. Before we moved to Houston, this our last Christmas before we uh, moved to Houston, we turned up. Man, my, my granddaddy, he comes over. My daddy's two sisters, they come over. My cousin Nick, you're gonna hear about Nick again, my weird ass cousin. Don't got my last name, he a Davis, but he weird. Second cousin? Uh, nah, he's my first cousin, he's my sister. Shit, Billy, that's he's, my, he's my, yeah, he's that's, my, uh, that's, my that's daddy's your cousin, cousin. sister's That's your cousin, cousin. Son, yeah. Yeah, Nick. Never forget old Nick. Just remember, can't Nick. forget about Nick. Nick, you damn sure can't forget about gotcha. Nick. Nick is Nick uh, like Lil Brunham. Lil Brunham, you can't forget about Lil Brunham. You can't never forget about Lil Brunham. You can't never forget about Lil Brunham. The atmosphere is thick because uh, my mama's sister is down. My uncle Mel is there. So let me tell you about my mama real quick. When my mom and my dad was together, happiest time of my life. Happy times, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And me and my mama have some happy times now. Like here recently, it's been golden. But like these was the, the golden years. So my mama named Shira. My mama is from Trinidad. Her 
Her sister's name is Sahita. My aunt Sahita. My aunt Sahita. Stop. Yeah. I've been doing this show with you. Yeah. Almost two years. Yeah. And I just found out you're training daddy. Yeah, Didi, I'm training daddy. You ain't saying shit about that. I was wondering where the hair came from. <coughs> All this time, you just thought. I just thought you, mom and daddy, just was considerate. Let me just give you a quick. <laughs> let me give you a quick, quick walk down memory lane. Go back. Real fast. Go ahead. Because I guess this is important to the viewers. They gotta have it. They've been asking about the eyebrows. They gotta have it. They've been asking about the drugs. Hey, we learning together, guys. They've been the asking. drugs, all that shit. All the right? party, all, everybody come, it comes out together. All the women. Everything. The women, it's all here. It's Trinity blood, bro. You gotta do this. I gotta tell them. No, no. You have to fuck women. I, yeah, of course. We have carnival. It's in your blood. It's carnival. It's wild. Why doesn't women understand him? I get it. And I'm, and I'm crazy. And they You're crazy. That's the Caribbean shit. Man. Nah, you dress that up with being a nigga from Tennessee that moved to Texas. Yeah, you throw uh, some country on top of that, that shit. shit. Some country sauce, though. Yeah, some country sauce, some down south, Texas, Louisiana shit in there. You get, that's a hell get, of a, yeah. It's a lot of mixing. That's a lot. That's a gumbo. Yeah, it's a yeah. Gumbo. It's a gumbo of, that damn sure gumbo. of interactions and emotions. Right. They, Sam, Ernest Simon can't figure this shit out. They don't even know what's they, going they, on. Like, these Plus, crazy. Ernest got money. Ernest got money. Everybody know Ernest, Ernest got money. <laughs> and a three sheets. Got, got money. money. They got that's that. Who got money. They come for money. His name is Big Money E. Big Money E. That's what's in the everybody. comments now on. It's Big Money E. It's Big Money E. Big Money. E. When you see him and address Simo. him as such. Yeah. Now you, you can say me? Ernest and Simon. If you want to. But if individually you gotta say you got Big to Money E. Big Money E. Big money e. That's, he deserved it. Big Money E. The man got money now. He he told you his that. So y'all know him when he wasn't. Hey, y'all know him now. He got money he got now. Money. So, real quick, the story about my mama and how she got this blood. Mm. Uh my mom, uh, her mom, Joanne Blanks, out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Mm. Midwest, much love to them. Everybody Shout out to Indiana. So my mama's mama, just black and bad. Mm. Dark, black skin. She like- Like black ass was but, in but, the a, 70s. But, but a little bit lighter than black ass. She was just that- that Dark, dark that, 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 dark, that, 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 that mocha. That mocha. Right. Mocha black. Mocha black. Yeah. Big, tight ass afro, nice titties. All together. Waist. waist. Sunk the fuck. What waist, bitch? What waist, bitch? Ain't no waist. Ain't no goddamn waist. Nice round, tight ass. Now, I'm only telling you this because I seen the pictures and, and this is this, this is this is I gotta have this. This is Joanne Blanks. So, Joanne just fine. Joanne went to high school, never graduated. You ain't gotta graduate. You that fine. <laughs> Just, just, just out here making money, working, doing her thing. Jump right on the job. So, Joanne out here, moving and shaking. Out of the bar one night, meets a guy, real kind of quiet guy. People unsuspectingly t don't take him for anything much. Guy by the name of Jerry Abdul. Jerry Abdul is a, a transfer student from Trinidad and Tobago who's come to Indiana University, IUPU. They got an offset engineering uh, campus right there, not far from uh, the city of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Mm. So he's there studying in a bar, having a drink, which ain't ra it crazy from back in those days. Right. Back in the, you know, like late 50s, early 60s, right in there. That ain't crazy. No. He just in there having a drink. See Joanne. She walks over and says, what you studying, nigga? And his accent and his delivery got a sip. His chivalry, the way he was moving. Mm. Asked her to sit down. You know what I'm saying? She sat there, ordered the drinks, paid for the food that was with her friend that was at the bar. Had them talking. And then one night, you had a lockdown. Come on now. Cause you know what happened? Talk to me. When she Joanne got up full of them, full of them drinks, I took back to that house. Yeah. That house that's full of nice light classical music. Mm. Studying books. Yeah. Then he shoved all that Caribbean dick in her. Raw dick. Raw. Yeah, he went raw. Because Jerry been fucking. Jerry, you had to go raw. Been fucking women from around the world in carnival. That's what he do. All growing up. Now, what people don't know about Jerry is Jerry comes from money. He's a Trini boy with a lot of money. Business like, owner. Like Got he, land. He come like from money. Like E with the money. Come from the money. So go ahead with Gary. People don't know this about, and I don't talk about it much, because it's uh, as you'll hear in this story, uh, Jerry Abdul. Had a lot of land that he 
came from, but he was a businessman. He opened up donut and oil shops. He had uh, 200 residents that lived on his property, his family property. 200 people, bro, living on his property, paying you rent, living on his land, working your land. And you got gas stations that sell oil, gas, in a small country like that, that's big shit. And you're selling donuts. See the ladies, they call him butter, butter, mm. butter, the way he move. Smooth. Cause the nigga smooth. The nigga smooth. And everybody like how butter make you feel. Butter make you feel good. Tastes good. And it make you feel, feel good. good. Yeah. And he was a little chubby, little, little, little round, little, 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 little short nigga, but he was, he was fly though. Fly, right. Fly, Money stout, was fly. Yeah. But he dropping dick off. He dropping it off. And he, and he, got, and he got my soon to be grandmother turned up. He got us so turned up all the way. He didn't already told, told her we finna get married. Off the rip. Off the rip. Listen. Got married. Got some citizenship. Got them out of state fees, out of, out of, out of the country fees right. waived. Foreign fees. All that shit gets dropped. Has my aunt Sahida. Then has my mama. Then on one cold day. Mm, take your time. Jerry Abdul says, I got to go. My, jo- my grandma joined was like, what you talking about? I got to go. I have to go back to where I'm from. He leaves, goes back to Trinidad, stays gone. And for the rest of my mama's life, from the time she was six years old, she had an estranged relationship with Jerry Abdul. Jerry going back. Heartbreaking thing is, after about eight years of this, my grandma and my mama and them find out Jerry married a white woman. Goddamn. Had a whole nother family. Never fully officially divorced my grandmother. That ended up getting worked out. And so my, my mom pretty much grew up and her auntie, my, my aunt Sahita grew up, really no dad in their life. Just a house full of women, making stuff happen. My grandma Bibi, who is my, my great grandmother, she was Joanne's mother. And uh, you know, unfortunately, once my mama got to college and met my dad, she tried to reach out to Jerry. Jerry. Jerry came to graduation for my mama. And uh, my mama was happy, glowing. It's a picture you'll see eventually on my, well, it's on my page on, on Instagram, of my mom and my daddy walking out happy on graduation. They walk right up into Jerry. Now, my daddy been dating this woman for almost two years. I ain't never met the man. Just heard that he was, you know, in the wind. So he shows up, and the first thing she sa- he says to my mom is, why you didn't marry a white man? Why you want to marry this nigga? Mama cussed his ass smooth the fuck out. She said, I'm going to marry this nigga. He a better nigga than you. And I'm gonna show you what real love is about. And that's how my mama and daddy came into the play of trying to make shit work out together. Sad part about all this is uh, 1984, a couple years after I was born, my grandmother got hit with breast cancer. And black people back in them days, when you get hit with breast cancer, you don't know how to deal with that shit. So she ended up passing away. My grandma BB, who was my great grandmother, took over coming in our house raising us and so she's up in age bro she like you know what i'm saying 80 years old still making shit happen bro she was born in like 1909 at this time so she old as shit chew snuff some of y'all may not know what stuff snuff is but she tucked the shit in like a like a like a negro league pitcher mm-hmm. she had to, <laughs> love my my great grandma to death but she, if you want to know what you think what she looked like think about satchel page and take away the beard and the mustache. And that's my grandma, BB. A little bit hunched over, because she worked in a factory. Right. Now, she got bad luck with me and two. My uncle, uh, my grand- grandpa, great-grandpa Barrett, uh, Barrett Fennessy, he got ended up getting killed at a, uh, a crap game. Somebody walked up in there, in the crap game, pulled a gun out and said, you gonna keep fucking my wife, but you ain't gonna do it no more. Pop, shot him. In the middle of a crap game. Died in a gambling house. So she was depressed, working in the factory and shit, sewing machines and shit, taking care of the kids, raising the family, dolo. So my mama's mindset, my mama went to school early, like she graduated from, from high school at 16, nigga, right to college, Tennessee State. That's where she met my daddy at. So all this energy on Christmas time is like, my mama and my daddy is the couple that's making it. So the family's just here. Now, once he, she married my Uncle Mel, who, he, he gone, but, that nigga worked for, uh, for Boeing. For a nigga working for Boeing that went to IU making big bread, left his first wife for my auntie. 
Mm-hmm. Told him, hey, I ain't coming back. What you talking about? Yeah, I ain't coming back. Yeah, you. Yeah, it's a wrap. Got this new new Sahita, this black and Trinidad thing. I I I can't let that thing go. And she about twenty years younger than it, but uh, yeah, y'all will be all right. Is. Go ahead and file whatever you get. You can get whatever you want. You can keep the house. File whatever you need to file. Keep you can keep the house. We don't get no discrepancy about that. You got that. Hey hey. Hey Chris, he ain't never coming home. Hey, he ain't never coming home again. Wait until his kids got to be like 15, 16, 17 and drop that on them in the last couple of years. And hey, it is what it is. He used to say, Monsi ain't wanted for, sh- ain't wanted for shit. And she was a bad motherfucker too. She went to, went to high school, left, went straight working for AT&T and, sat, and, and, and the Bell South Company. And then when they ended up murdering, she had two jobs working in telecommunications. So she's six figures on her own. So everybody comes to my mom and my daddy house in Tennessee, all these extra bedrooms, Whole family there, we turned up. My, my aunt there, my uncle there, my daddy, my mama, my uncle BB, who ran with my, my daddy, he there. All my family from Chattanooga, Tennessee, my granddaddy, he there. Coach, that's my daddy's daddy, was a you know, big time football coach, athletic director. He there at the house. Now, he leaves in the middle of us just having a good ass time. He just darts out like, hey, I gotta go. My mama comes to us and gets all the kids around me, Joanna, and Brittany says, hey, all right, guys, Santa's coming to visit. So you want to see Santa? We like, hell yeah. My cousin Nick's there. Yeah, I want to see Santa too. We excited. My mama, she goes out and go gets kids from across the street. My homeboy Demetrius, he comes over. Next door neighbor named Bobby, white boy, he comes over. All the kids sitting in the living room. My mama done baked cookies. You know what I'm saying? We got juice. We got candy. I'm talking about this is when Eminem first released them big bags, at least when we was able to get them in our house. The big bags of Eminem's, that was the holiday color ones, mm-hmm. the red and the green. Yeah. She got a big ass jar of Eminem's. So I'm walking by, I'm grabbing handfuls of them Eminem's. I'm wearing them hoes out. I'm, I'm geeked up on chocolate. Right. We sitting there, and I'm just so happy, bro. Got cookies. It's just a vibe. You know what I'm saying? You already know Christmas spirit is in the room. My daddy, he keep them radios on. He got a radio in every room. Everything turned on Christmas music. You know what I'm saying? What do the lonely do? Goddamn right. At, At Christmas. Christmas. Yes. Yeah, you, that's, that's what you got here. Yeah. What do the lonely do? At Christmas. Boom. That's the vibe. We sitting in there. My mama says, hey, y'all ready to see Santa? Shit, we hype. Door swings open. In walks Santa Claus. Look like Santa Claus. Santa Claus ain't white. Like the pictures. But the light skin, I'm, I'm, I'm following it. But it's something about Santa Claus that's just bothering me. Got the whole outfit on, boom, top. Whole Santa top, whole Santa beard. Whole Santa hat, whole Santa wig, hair coming down. Look like Santa. But it ain't really Santa, Santa pants. I know it's not the Santa Claus, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's getting to be a good representation of Santa. And I'm, I'm calling him Santa because I don't know. I don't want to be disrespectful. This could be him. I don't, I don't know. I'm still in this skeptical zone. I'm just young enough to be skeptical, but just old enough to still feel like, I don't know if I want to fuck this up and make that jump to not believing in Santa Claus. Right. So I see him walk over and then something hits me. My cousin Nick, he sees it, he taps me. He says, look. I look and I say, yeah, you right. So Santa comes over and he says, ho, 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 boys and girls. Has everybody been good? All the kids, yeah. Is everybody ready for what Santa has to give? Yeah. Goes in the bag. Got a little bag with him. Starts pulling out toys. Everybody getting toys. Now these ain't Ninja Turtles, but these the maybe Walgreens, right. maybe uh, Eckert's toys. They, they some GI Joes. You right. know what I'm saying? The little cheap ones. You know what I'm saying? Like the man and just a gun. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing else extra with it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, ain't no remote control. No, no, no. Ain't no remote control. Nothing. Got gotcha. These is minor toys. These those you know giveaway toys. You know the little Nerf footballs. Throwing gotcha. that shit out. Throwaways. Everybody's excited though. The room is electric. Me and Nick, though, we're taking our gifts. We're putting them to the side, but we're still analyzing the situation. And that's when I tapped my mom and said, Ma, that ain't Santa. That's Granddaddy. <laughs> Immediately, Santa says, Oh, boy, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Shut your goddamn mouth. <laughs> so now, Santa done told me to shut my goddamn mouth. <laughs> I know exactly. This, this sounds very familiar. <laughs> this, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm Santa. No, nah, that's Granddaddy. Yeah, I know that's my Granddaddy. Hey, Granddaddy, you know why you my Granddaddy? Cause you got on my granddaddy's shoes. Right. He didn't change his fucking shoes. And down there on the, on the shoes was his coaching shoes. 
Yep, the McGregor pullover spikes. You goddamn right, like, McGregor's. With some cleats. These cleats he got on. These football coaching cleats that he got on. With a whole Santa outfit. And the room busts out and laughs. The whole house laughs. <laughs> and my granddaddy Jack Milby said, see, man, you done messed Christmas up for these little young these, You know these kids don't get no toys across the street. Now you're privileged. You're just stupid. You, you, you ain't supposed to say nothing. You ain't supposed to say nothing. The kids is happy. The mama smoked, that man mama smoked crack. She ain't, she ain't giving no Christmas. <laughs> Calling this shit out. <laughs> you done called this shit out. Now I'm trying to piece shit together. Oh, so the lady smoked crack across the street. That's why they had y'all told Didi to come. All right, well, all right. So now my daddy's laughing, everybody laughing. It's a great night. We partying hard like a motherfucker. I see under the tree. Then I already had started wrapping shit up. See, it's the shape of something looks like a bike and I'm gonna ride this bike you have to ride tonight it, Cause, tonight because they told me I can get to open one gift that's what the rule you get to open one gift before you go to bed right and my mama was like you pick your one gift and you open it now you know not tomorrow you know that's on you right. I'm gonna get one though so I see that I'm, I'm opening the bike I said my mom I want to open that gift right there why you want to open that one now why don't you wait till tomorrow nah run that right now tear it open it's a bike I don't know what to do. I'm just so excited. It is now 9.45, my bedtime, because I told y'all before previously, I had to be asleep in the bed by 11. Ain't no stay up late, right. all that shit. So I said, mama, can I ride it? He, she said, no, you can't ride it. My great grandmother's down there. She was like, yeah, well, it's time for y'all to go to bed because St. Nick is gonna be coming down the chimney in a minute. So reluctantly, we go upstairs, we get in the bed. Me, my sisters, Nick, we all in the same room. We try to close our eyes and play sleep. We playing sleep good than a motherfucker. My mama and daddy come in, peep in the room. My mission is, I'm finna see what the fuck Santa Claus comes down the motherfucking chimney. Cause I know good and well, I done deserve this fucking chimney all year. The whole too, too ain't small. ain't shit coming down. Ain't shit coming down there. Right. Birds can't even get in the motherfucking chimney. I don't know how the fuck Santa gonna get in the chimney. But this is bullshit and I'm finna find out what's going on. So, I leave out the room after they come do they check. This time it's gotta be like 12 o'clock. The house is completely dark with the exception of Christmas lights running throughout the house. Ain't no lights on, but you got the faint sound of Christmas music playing in all the rooms. So I'm tiptoeing around and looking. My great grandmother, she passed out, she said. I look around, I don't see nobody else, everybody's asleep. I go downstairs, my Uncle Mel and Aunt Hina, they knocked out sleep. Now I'm going to where the Christmas tree is, right next to the chimney. I got to see what's going on. Cause we left out cookies and milk for Santa with notes. Yeah. So they're keeping this shit going. I get over there. I see the cookies we left out been ate off of. See a note from Santa that says, you guys have been good boys and girls this year. We hope you like all your toys. I look over to the right, whole room full of toys. There's toys everywhere. There's toys from my sister, toys from my cousin. It's just toys and gifts everywhere. I'm like, fuck, I didn't even see Santa come in. But I hear something faint, giggling, like some faint, like, <laughs> look over. My mom and my daddy, they still up. They laid in a pallet. I don't know if you know what a pallet is. You got them right over the pallet is. A pallet ain't nothing more than a blanket. Blanket laid on the floor. And a pillow. They under that blanket making the sweetest love mm. you ever want to hear. And I'm, I'm kind of like, oh shit, I'm in trouble because I ain't supposed to be up. So I'm trying to move. My daddy pulled the cover back, what's going on over there? I'm gonna hide behind the couch and I watch. And my daddy sat there with my mama and they were just sitting there looking at each other and they were just saying, girl, you know, girl, you know how much I love you. Mm. She was like, I love you. You did all this stuff to make sure them kids were straight for Christmas. I can't believe you did all this. I like listening, you know what I'm saying? That's when I started understanding the word sacrifice. She was like, you pawned your chain and your watch? He said, look, my check hadn't come. I couldn't let them kids go without Christmas. So my daddy pawned his, he was a jury dude. Mm. Pawned his gold watch. Pawn his gold nugget rope chain so he would have money for us to have toys for Christmas. He's like, I ain't worried about that chain or that watch. We'll get it back. But couldn't let my kids wake up and couldn't let Nick wake up without Christmas. And that 
at that moment, I seen my mama slide her head under them covers and go to work. <laughs> that moment, I had a lot that I was faced with. That's a tough one. I seen my grandmother. I Sorry, saw my mama. mama, and I said, you know what? That's love. Santa Claus ain't real. That's all it could be at that point. My daddy was Santa. Yeah. I said, they deserve this moment. <laughs> so I walked my ass back upstairs and uh, went to sleep. And more stories about Christmas when we Goddamn come Goddamn right. On Next Spectrum. Wow. You miss me podcast. Just wow. What's up, everybody? I'm D-Lay. And I'm Billy Sorrells. This is the number one storytelling podcast in the world, people. We're here for you guys, and we're doing mm -hmm. something special. Patreon.com is a site that you guys need to check out. We're doing special things, exclusive things for you guys, mm -hmm. like uh, early access to some of the episodes. Yeah, man, most definitely. Bonus content that you wouldn't find anywhere else. Yes, discounted uh, 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 merchandise. Oh, yeah, we're giving away a lot of shit. People, you gotta, but this is for, for some of our serious followers, our people that are really down with the Did You Miss Me podcast. We're doing these things for you guys. And if you're not familiar with Patreon, go in and we'll give you guys all the luxuries that Did You Miss Me Podcast And you know has. what? You know how we know if they're real fans? How do we know? They know this number right here. 323-385-9734. We'll get somebody over there to you. Hey, man. We're back. Billy. Hey, listen. Your, 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 mama, your mama went there. Let me tell you something. My mama was doing a goddamn job. She went job. there. She did what she had and to do. And she was doing what she was doing for a person that's in pawn, pawn some shit. Goddamn right. And, you know, that was... A great Christmas. This other Christmas, not so great, bro. Not so great. Uh, we moved to Texas. Mm -hmm. My daddy is uh doing all the fuck he can do. Stop! What happened? Just hold up, Billy. What you got? Oh, you on the page? Real hold quick. Hold on. Billy, I like when people fucking with us. Do you hear me? Yeah. I like... They fuck with us hard. Which video are you on? Let me see. I'm glad you asked. Oh, shit. Hey, fan of the week. That's Gotta have him. Let me see. Hold on. What do he say? Fan of the week. Check him out. Hold on. Shout out to Anthony Vance. Hey, nigga took his picture. Look at his profile. Head straight up. Been like to this. the pin pose. Been there. We fucks with you, Ant. Hey, we do fuck with you, Ant. Listen to what he said. What'd he say? How we got. We talking about us, the whole yeah. family, the whole goddamn family. family. Ernest, Simon, Billy, D big Lane. money, e. big money, excuse me, big money, e. yeah, and Anthony, and Anthony, and Anthony, Anthony Vance, and say how we got seven K views, seven thousand views, mm -hmm. three hundred seventy eight comments, and under three hundred likes, five question marks, fam, five. Bam bam bam, bam! 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 He ain't done. He got more shit to say, Billy. What he saying? Glad you asked. Y'all ain't real fans, bitch ass niggas. <laughs> All right, I'm paraphrasing. I was paraphrasing. That's Let what you get saying. back to your words, Aunt. My yeah. bad. I just got excited because I know you was excited when you, you know, just doing your thing. Y'all ain't real fans. If you don't like the fucking video, bruh. <laughs> Real shit. He said that. Then he got three 100 like Three 100, three 100 emojis. But they red. So he definitely a blood. I'm going to tell you, he, he damn sure a blood. I'm going to translate that in down south terms. That's the only color they come in. <laughs> but, I still, but I looked at the red hat. Yeah, the red the hat in the background. I associate it, it. His house is red. It definitely gang related. Every, everything no gang related. It. It, definitely he, gang related. it definitely gang related. It definitely gang related. So from three 100s, I'm going to tell you something. Pimp C said this on one of his songs. Three shots. Three shots. Mm -hmm. Three shots. Yeah. Man, hold up. <laughs> he continues on to say, <laughs> go up to the top. And push the thumbs up. Hashtag, did you miss me? Hashtag, then like, then the, like the video. video. That's real fan love right there. Anthony Vance. When you gangster niggas to like and comment, and when you put your motherfucker, hey, Ant, ain't nothing but love. Hey, hey, Vance, we fucks with you, big dog. We appreciate you. We sure appreciate thing. you. Fan of the week, Anthony Vance. If you want people to find Vance. out about the podcast, 
you hit the like button. That's it. The way the YouTube algorithm works, and on most platforms, the more likes, the more exposure that they send this on people's uh, timeline and, and uh, in their feed to see what we're doing over here. Yeah. So we definitely want to keep growing. Appreciate your aunt. Appreciate your aunt. Aunt, ain't number love, big dog. So appreciate you. My mama left my daddy. We, uh, we all know that that's how that story ends. Mm -hmm. And Christmas is uh, it's a little fucked up. My mama's gone. My great grandmother, 90 years old now, 89, about to turn 90, comes still down. My daddy still comes and spends time with her for the holidays. She's there with my mama, but she's still helping us day to day in the house. And it's, uh, it's rocky. You know what I'm saying? This is the, a rough time for us. Mm -hmm. But guess what? We don't give a fuck because we kids. We're going to make the best of it. Now, it's Christmas. Toys been then delivered. My daddy done made the sacrifice again. Not a huge Christmas, but still Christmas nonetheless. I'm trying to entertain myself however the fuck way I can. And no way way I'm entertaining myself. I'm fucking over my grandmother, my great grandmother. What you doing to her? We got a house to where you can, it's one story, so you can climb up onto the roof. There's a sun window in the middle of our living room to where light comes in from outside. So what I do, I hang out up there. I, I climb the side fence and I'm hanging out on top of the thing. So I go up to the window and I knock on the window and the window sounds like the front door. But I can see her get up from watching Phil Donahue and say, somebody at the door, somebody at the door. And go to that door. She open the door, hello, hello. Close the door, go sit back down. She watching Donahue. Ah, uh, knock, 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 knock. Somebody at the door. Somebody at the door. I get it. She get up, go to the door. Hello. Hello. Nobody there. Sit back down. Doing this for about 30 minutes. I'm, I'm dying. I done got so, I done, I'm laughing so hard. I go get my sister, Joanna. She climbs on the roof. We up there. We watching. Tears, nigga. We can roll off this house and break our neck, but it's the funniest shit. Watching it. So I go downstairs, I said, you know what? This will set it over the top. My, gra my great grandmother, her hearing is going away. She got hearing aid. I said, I know what we doing, we going to this house. It's Christmas, we're gonna take it to the next level. She said, what you gonna do, Billy? I said, we're gonna go down there. And we're gonna talk in front of grandma, but we're not gonna say any words. We're just gonna move her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so she think that the hearing aid done busted and she, tur and she turns it up. So we started off, we walk in the house. My sister Brittany don't know this. So she in the kitchen eating some cereal. We walk right in there. I say, my sister say, we having a whole conversation. My grandmother walks in, she said, when we turn to my grandma, we be like, whole time we saying grandma. Right. And to my sister Brittany, I say, hey, grandma can you hear me? So now my grandma hears me say grandma can't hear me. But when I'm talking to her directly, she ain't caught on me, right. that I'm just not saying shit. So I'm saying grandma can't hear me. Say something to grandma. So we all doing this shit. Me, Joanna, Brittany was like, she's laughing. She starts seeing on the shit. So we all fucking with grandma. Right. Grandma was like, I can't hear y'all, baby. I'm going to turn it up some more. <laughs> she got that thing so loud, it's whistling. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like a faint... So my, so, so my grandma now done turned the TV up in the house. She turning everything up. This goddamn hearing aid, I can't hear a goddamn thing. Yeah. I gotta go get me some more batteries. Cause that used to be have to be what we had to do. We had to go take it to Eckert's or, some, yeah, or, Eckert's. or, or Walgreens. God damn, Eckert's. And, and she would get her some batteries. Now she would think Walgreens big shit. Cause that's where she used to go on dates and shit. You know, Walgreens, Woolworths and shit. You know, they used to drink the shakes at the fountain and mm -hmm. drink Coca-Cola's and shit. So she thought, no, that was a big deal. Big shit. So she got everything up in the house, loud than a motherfucker. My daddy comes in from outside. Hey, hey, what the hell is going on? Hey, hey. She said, Bill, kids been talking to me? I ain't heard nothing damn thing he said all day. <laughs> <laughs> the TV loud, turn this down. My mama shows up. She comes over to say what's up. Mama comes in. She said, what, what's going on? Why is everything so loud, Bill? What, what's going on? Hey, I don't know, Shira. Got them kids fucking with your, with your grandma. <laughs> That's why I told you, you need to talk to them. They're dealing with the shit, Joe. You need to try and talk to them. They're dealing with the shit. Well, what they doing? 
the niggas is walking around saying stuff to grandma, but they ain't saying the words. So she don't think the goddamn hearing aids out. She heard me just fine in the conversation. That's when it dawned on me. How you hear me and don't hear the goddamn kids? So I figured the whole goddamn thing I out. Figured the whole shit out. So he calls Brittany out. Brittany, what y'all doing to your grandma? Nothing, Daddy. We were just talking to her. So, 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 okay. All right. All right. All right. Come here, Grandma. Stay right here. Talk to her, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to her. <laughs> so, Talk to her, Brittany. Brittany. Brittany was like, hey, Grandma. Hey, baby. See, now that's normal. Say something else. Hey. <laughs> she trying to adjust the shit back down. My mom and my daddy sitting right there. My grandma and Brittany right there. They in the, the tree right there. I'm covering my ass in from outside. I'm outside playing with my little remote control car. And as soon as I come in the door, I see Joanna getting questioned. Joanna comes in the room. My dad said, hey, hey, come here. Come on, come on your ass over here too. Talk to your grandma. Say something to her. She said she can't hear y'all. I don't, daddy, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, shit. She about daddy, to I'm fucking I'm... dime everybody out. She daddy, I'm sorry. Listen. Okay, okay. Okay. My, my, my mama getting hot now because she don't like this shit. Now she's like, oh, so these niggas got it. This was some bullshit. This was some bullshit. Chwana, what the hell was going on? What you do? Tell tell us. Who did it? I'm sitting there like, don't and in it. my mind, I'm like, please just say, you don't know, and, and, and just, just get the fuck off. over it, right? Nope. She full tear up. She full tear up. Now she, Billy said that we should, and I said, Billy said what? Because I'm trying to stop this shit. Mm-hmm. And so, my mama there, I'm 12. I'm not trying to get no ass whooping on Christmas. I said, what's, what's the problem, Dad? Well, your grandma said she can't hear y'all. What's going on? I said, I don't know what's, I don't know what's happening. Well, talk to her, because she said she can't hear y'all. I said, hey, grandma. <laughs> hey, bro, wait a minute. They so sick of y'all kids. They fucking sick of y'all. What the fuck is going on? What y'all doing to my mama, man? Fuck. So I say, she say, he said, say something to your grandmother. I say, hey, grandma. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, she said, I can't hear you, baby. I said, see, I, I said, daddy, they can't. That is. I'm trying to run the bullshit in right. front of them. I said, daddy, I don't know why she came. I said, hey, I'm no. <laughs> He said, no, what I'm do. I'm going to fuck you up. It's all right. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you up. And I'm gonna fuck you up. And somebody's knocking at the door. Who knocking at the goddamn door? Billy not climbing the stairs and we were watching oh, grandma shit. knock on the door. I said, God damn. My daddy was so mad. Closed his fist, hit me in my chest. <laughs> Closed fist to the chest. Now, I want you to know at that age, when you get hit right here in your sternum, you could my die. whole. You could die. Well, it feel like you're dying. You definitely feel like you're dying. Closed fist hit me right here. Boom, right in my chest. My my chest caves around his his hand. He caved my chest in. That's what it's called when he cave your chest mm-hmm. in. All the air done been knocked out of me. I'm laying under the Christmas tree with some <laughs> gifts, crying. I got motherfucking pine needles sticking to me because the, sh- the tree shedding, and I'm rolling around, and my daddy done pulled the belt out. He wearing my ass out under the Christmas tree. Worst ass whooping I think I've caught. On Christmas. On Christmas with gifts. Told my ass out the frame under the tree. Didn't nobody else get ass whooping. Hey, bro. And that was the worst Christmas. And that was a tale of two Christmases for me because I, I I never want to do that shit ever again. All right, Billy. Worst gift. My Aunt Ovella, 1996, got oh, me damn, ski mask, a mitten, and some mittens and a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> ski mask, mittens, and a hammer. You got a hammer. You know what my daddy got? Wait, how old are you? 13. 13 years old. A hammer. A hammer, nigga. John Henry hammer, nigga. I ain't talking about the one with the, the one that stripped the nails out in the back. Nigga, a hammer, like a mallet. They ain't think shit about your future. You know what she, you know what? She put zero thought into that gift. Ask me what, ask she me She did what? not give a fuck about your, she didn't think about your daughter. Hey, ask me, ask me what my daddy got. What'd your daddy get? I'm glad you asked. Mm. My daddy got a motherfucking train caboose model car that you got to put together. 
and he got a checker set. At 37 years old. Fuck you getting him a train caboose for? <laughs> and a checker set. And some black socks. Some black gold toes. You had to be madder than a motherfucker. I'm like, nigga, I want a train set. The fuck you get me this hammer for? This is bullshit. <laughs> Ask me what she got my mama. What your mama get? I'm glad you asked. And we'll be right back right after this. It's Marcus King. There you go. Marcus King. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. We ain't got My that title. budget yet. We still working that budget. Come on in, man. What's up, brother? How you feel, man? There good, is. man. Good, good, good. What's up, brother? I timed you just you right. Man? We wrapping up. We wrapping up one. I timed you just oh, right. No, no, you good. Y'all come in and have a seat, man. Can we go in the green room? Yeah, yeah. You in the green room, yeah, right? Green room. You in the green room. Okay now. You What's up, bro? How you doing, man? Man, thank you for always coming to support, bro. Good to see you. We wrapping up. We'll be done in just a second here. All right. Hey, so when you come in, just come back in. Just come back in quiet. Thanks. Go ahead. All right. And we back. We are back. Told me, I was telling you, she got my mama a fucked up gift, too. Let me tell you something. She got my mama a, a super-sized box of heavy flow maxi pads. Christmas, bruh. Christmas. You get somebody maxi pads for Christmas, you really don't. Them ski mask minutes and hammer, it hurt me, you know why? why? Cause I felt, like you said, I felt like she didn't believe in me until my daddy told me what it was. She's trying to tell you what she wants you to do. She wants you to go out there and rob somebody. You roll the ski mask on, put the mittens <laughs> on, you got a hammer, knock somebody upside the motherfucking head. We laughed about that shit, but that's what she do. She get fucked up gifts. She don't give a shit. Bad gifts. What's your worst gift, bruh? Glad you asked. Mm. Let me tell you why I remember this. Because I worked hard for this. You worked hard for the gift that you finna get bad? I worked hard for this Christmas. Oh, that was when they had you on that bullshit retribution that was gonna give you something good for Christmas if you did what they said. That's what I, that's what I remember about this Christmas. It was winter. Uh huh. Me and Uncle Roommate was picking pecans. Okay. So why because is you and your forty-something-year-old uncle going and picking pecans. pecans? Because you can sell pecans. Oh, you can pick them from a tree, uh -huh. and you can sell them and make money. Right. So I remember saying, "We gonna get each other gifts this year." You and Uncle Roommate. Me and Bebo gonna get each other gifts. Cause y'all sharing the same room. I'm a nigga. I see you every morning. And you smell him <laughs> drunk when you come in. I smell you. And he tell you his adult stories, and you a child. I'm. I made. I'm gonna get you a gift, you're gonna give me a gift. I was like, cool. So I knew he was fucking over me. We was picking up, we'd get like sacks. Mm -hmm. I'd be out there like a half a day picking pecans. In Louisiana, it's pecan season. That's big shit. Pecan pies, people wanna make these pies. You're gonna buy these pecans from somebody. Right. So big sacks of them, right? We would pick sacks of them, right? This motherfucker give me $5. He fucked you. He horse fucked you. Horse fucking me. Bebo is horse fucking me. I ain't tripping. I, I, I just want to get enough money to get his gift. And I know you fucking over me. Christmas time, you're going to make it up. Because you got all this money. You got it. So I made about 20, maybe 25 bucks. Right. Because we would pick him on the weekends. Uh -huh. I was like, I got something for him. I know what he like. I'm going to make this shit dope for him, right? Right. I went to the mall. caught the bus. I caught the bus. To the mall. To the mall. Yeah. Right? I got this nigga a tie. Oh no. Right? Oh, the nigga don't even dress up. He ain't even got dress up clothes. But, you but I'm like, I'm I'm thinking like he's an adult, so he'll he'll, you know, he'll put the rest of the shit together, nigga. I'm fucking eight, nigga. I'm buying you a tie. So get this nigga a nice tie, right? Yeah. A nice tie and a card. Yeah. You know what I mean? Put inside, hey man, you know, thanks for being in my life. I really appreciate having you. You know, learning a lot from you. Thanks for taking me with you to your job. Thank you for all you do for me. Some mornings I wake up a little late. Good thing I got you there to wake me up. You're 40. Uh, thanks. Bam. I'm excited because 
I know he got money. You know what I mean? I know he drink every night, but I know he, he got me. That morning, I'm looking out under the, I don't see nothing for me. I don't see nothing for me. It's bad when you're going looking for the shit. I'm looking for it because I don't care about nobody else. I, me and you got an agreement, nigga, and I know you got money. You got me, clearly. I don't see nothing. So I'm like, God damn it, he don't come home that night. Nigga don't come home Christmas night. He don't come home Christmas morning. So I'm like, nigga, he show up around noon. I'm like, Bebo, you seen your gift? He ain't even opened his shit yet. Right? They go over there, open it up. He lit. I can smell it on him. He's still lit from the next year. He ain't all the way like he was last night. But he still but got it's, some, it's still on him. It's still on him. And he open it up, right? Bam. Put everything with the card and everything. He looked at it. And he said, thank you, nephew. Thank you. Hey, you got a card, too. He get the card. He get the card. Read the card. He grabbed me by the head. Rub my shit. Said, you all right, little nigga. <laughs> and then walked off. I'm like, my gift in the room. Clearly my gift in the room, yeah. right? So I go in the room with him, right? So I was like, you got my gift? He was like, oh, shit. I almost forgot, right? He go in the closet. I was like, oh, nigga, shit. Oh, this motherfucker finna do it. Yeah. I knew you was gonna come through, nigga. You had to. We live together. Right. Too close together. Goes up, right? Comes down, hands me a coloring book, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nigga hands me a Cinderella coloring book. I said, no way. That that's a lot of hurt right there. Bruh, it hey. had already been colored in. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this my gift? Yeah, man, that shit. What you think? What the fuck do you mean, what you think? <laughs> fuck, what do I, I think somebody been coloring in this shit. <laughs> the worst gift I ever had, a coloring book. You know, man. That already been colored in. Ah. The voice. That's, that's a, that's a tough ass, tough ass ass. Christmas gift. But, but let me tell you, uh, Christmas for me, like, it was different because we didn't have a whole lot. So my buddy, he just got out of jail, Kid Smith. Hope you're doing the right thing now. We did crime together. Oh, you did crime together? Yes, we stole shit. I remember specifically Sears. They had these 501 Levi's. Mm. that we had to have. And on Saturday, we had to have them. Christmas landed on a Sunday. I'll never forget this because it's for two parts. You'll see it as we get through it. So Saturday comes. I tell kid, let's catch the bus, get to the spot, get our steel on, get back, drop off our shit. I like how disciplined <clears throat> you are with your theft. Get your steel on, bam. All we want is these jeans. All we want is these goddamn jeans. We in Sears, tearing Sears ass out the frame. Yeah. Come on with that, Sears. You wearing, you wearing Sears out. Run them Levi's, Sears. We need that. We in there operating how we need to operate. Mm -hmm. Bam. This one Friday, we get everything we need. What we do is we'll get all our shit. We'll wear big clothes. Mm -hmm. Right? Wear big clothes and we would take the jeans and we would wrap them around our waist. Mm. Bam. We just wrap two jeans around your waist. And if you really want to get fancy, you go put the pair of jeans on. Over the shit you got on. Over that, and then you wrap another one around your waist. And we had a drop off point. Bam, we drop off a little point, sit them right there, go back inside, hit them up, get back out of there. Mm -hmm. As planned, we do what we do. Me and kid go in there, get these jeans. I see this one lady, right? She had a short haircut. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a, like a tomboyish looking girl. Yeah. I'm like, something ain't right about her. Something ain't right about her. Can't figure it out. She just looked like the police. I know what it is. Yeah. She looked like the police. Okay. We in there. I see her. We work in two opposite sides of the room. Right. Right? I'm trying to get his attention because I see her watching him. We not tripping on your cameras. We not even tripping on that. We way too smooth for this. We don't even think the camera's catching us. I 
I see her, mm, you too busy stealing to really pay attention to your surroundings. He in it too he in it too deep. Right? When well, you stealing, you gotta see keep it. some shit going. You gotta, you gotta keep, keep, keep going. You gotta keep watching. Right? We walking out. She does it perfectly. As soon as we get out of Sears. Excuse me. You know what that excuse me is? Yeah. That's authorities. That's authorities. You got our shit. Excuse me. Um, come here for a second. Right? I'm like, oh my gosh. Why did you stop, kid? Keep going. You're supposed to run. Uh, I want to talk to you for a second. Our surveillance recognize you. And we want to have some words with you. Now, he didn't have none of the shit on him. Right. He didn't have it. Right. Luckily, he didn't, right? And she looked back, saw me, and said, yeah, and you too. Now, in my mind, I said, run. But if I run, I leave him guilty. I can't run. I got to stand in the pain. This is the first time young D-Lay is being tested. Oh, wait a minute. So you, do you know what, do you have clothes on you right now that you got that still? I got all kind of shit on me, <laughs> Billy. <laughs> I got all kind of shit on me. It's cold outside, so I got a jacket on, right? Ain't nobody asking to search me, right? So they were like, uh, what you guys need to do is you need to call your parents and let them know that we're taking you guys to jail. And, and I was like, I, I got somebody in my call, but the damn shit gonna be my parents. Yeah. I'm calling my sister. Calling me after My sister, 14. Yeah. She got her own apartment. Yeah, my sister had her own apartment. 14. I was like, I'm calling my sister. I know she gonna know what this is. Me and my sister, just, she just gonna know what it is. So I'm like, listen, I'm telling kid, when they call Daphne, mm -hmm. she gonna verify all this shit. We good. We walking out this bitch. Yeah. Tomorrow, nigga, we gonna turn up for Christmas. We right. good. I wasn't saying turn up back then, but we gonna, we're gonna have a good time for Christmas. Let's call my sister. They sitting there looking at me. I hear you got, yeah, we're calling for the uh, parents, the uh, legal guardians of Devetric Laird. Yeah. Yeah, we have him here and he's, uh, he's been apprehended for, for theft and we're gonna, we're gonna take him in. Both of them, him and his friend Kedrick Smith, we're gonna take him in. Unless you could, oh, okay, wow. Okay. okay. Would you like to speak with him? Cool. Let's go on the phone. She's like, what the fuck? She, she, you know, she's going off on me. What the fuck is going on? Uh, you know what? I'm going to beat your ass. I'm going to beat your ass. I'm going to beat your ass. All right. Bring your ass home. Hmm. You got in trouble, huh? Yeah. It's probably going to be worse in jail. Like, yeah. Let us go, right? Me and kid laugh as we get on the bus. We ain't tripping on this shit at all. Yeah. Next day, we wake up Christmas Day. This is what I remember about the, that following Christmas. It was so interesting because I beat going to jail and getting in trouble. But the bad part about it is I got to go to my dad's mom's house. I don't like going over there because they Pentecostal. <sighs> and they do shit different. Yeah. Like, they don't even want you listening to any music. Like, mm -hmm. no music, no... None of that. Hip hop, none of this shit. Gospel. Old school gospel, period. All day. All the ladies in there got long ass dresses on. No ladies even wear pants. We real about this Pentecostalism. This is what it is. And they pressing. Hey man, if you dance like that, you going to hell. Straight up. Ain't nothing to talk about. Ain't nothing to talk about. You about going that. to hell. You going straight to hell. I'm like, but Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson going, going to hell. hell. All right, cool. That's the environment I'm in. I don't want to go there. I'm excited. I'm big little. Rap, I'm going to jail. Me and my sister got to go over there. She know I don't like fucking going over there. Right. We over there, and they got a couple of gifts for us, right? Yeah. We open up the gifts, and it's quiet. Ain't no music. You know how fucked up that is, nigga, opening up gifts with no music. It's very quiet. All you hear is shit unraveling. Ain't no silent night. Ain't none of that shit. Ain't no Temptations? Ain't no Dennis Elwes? Nigga, no. Crackling. Crackling. Ain't no Eddie Kendricks? No nothing? Nothing. No nothing? Nothing. Come My on, sister. ain't no Bobby Womack. Ain't nothing. Nothing. Come on, dog. 
we just in that thing. Open up because now we even came over a little later because we like we the grandkids that you know we spend half the day with our family and the other day with my yeah. dad's family, right? So we get in there. Hold on, D. So you telling me there ain't no what to the long and do for crib? None of that. If you play that in that house, you're going to hell, nigga. Period. So no little Michael Jackson. Santa Claus is coming. Hell. Okay, cool. So where you going? Yeah. If you, right. if you listen to that and you're dancing to it. I said, man, god damn, I don't want to go over here and fuck it. I'm over there, and they got a couple of gifts for us. But they gifts is like kind of cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is what I remember about that. That Christmas, my daddy got me a bike. Mm -hmm. A red dirt bike. Yeah. I remember that bike. I was really excited because this is the first thing my daddy ever gave me. Oh, shit. That's the first thing he really had ever given me. I was like, wow. I'm you know, my sister got what she wanted. Right. I'm just like, this is dope. My daddy came by, said what's up, and got the fuck out. And I remember riding my bike up and down the street. Yeah. Because I didn't want to be in the house. Nigga, you can't listen to no music. Yeah. Riding my bike up and down the street. And I was just so excited to have a bike. I left my bike in the middle of the street. I never forget this. I left my bike in the middle of the street, right? Went back inside. I think I got something to eat. And I was like, where your bike at, Didi? And I was like, it's outside. And I was like, ain't no bike outside. I was like, yeah, it's out there. Ain't no bike outside, Didi. Mm -hmm. Go look. Red. DMX dirt bike. It's out there in the middle. Straight right now. Look, Didi, ain't no bike out there. It's out there. Just go look. Ladidi, come here. Where you bike at? That motherfucker's gone. I'm like, nigga, this gotta be a joke. There's no way. This is the first thing my daddy ever got me and it's gone. I'm like, oh my gosh. And they're getting ready to take us home. Cause I'm over my, my dad's folks house. Ah. So I'm like, Bro, I'm look, my sister looking at me and I'm like, hey, help me find this fucking bike. They putting us in the car, we getting ready to go back home. I'm devastated. I'm on some fuck Christmas shit. Yeah. I mean, fuck Christmas. Look at my bike gone. The only thing my daddy ever, is gone. Gone. Get back home. My grandmother, what the nigga got you? Sister, like she excited about it. She, what he got you? I was like, a bike. Who your bike? Somebody stole it. The nigga probably didn't buy it. <laughs> I was like, Cause she hate him. She hate the nigga. Y'all gonna take a bath? Get ready for bed. Oh, I'm sick, bro. Going to the bathroom. I remember crying in the bathtub. That, that bathroom cry? Bathroom cry. Shower cry, yeah. Got out the bathtub, dried off, went in the living room. Black out in the living room. Yeah. Hey, nephew. Hey, black guy. Guess what I got? Hi. I don't know. <laughs> it's crackhead, bro. She's a crackhead. <laughs> Hold on one second. Go outside, come back in. She got my bike. Black L got my bike. I don't know how the fuck she got that bike. She a crackhead. She got the bike. Nigga, I was so happy. I ran, grabbed it, jumped on it. I was sitting on the bike. And I was like, where you get the bike from? I was over there by your daddy in my uh, by your grandma's house and um I had to go somewhere, and I seen a bike outside, and I just took it, and I ran. I figured I was gonna bring it back, and then I figured, you know what? I'm gonna steal it. <laughs> so I stole your bike. Black hair stole the bike that was already mine. I meant that bike was supposed to be yours. The bike was supposed to be mine. One way or the other. She said, "And show us, nephew. 
That's yours. And she looked me dead in my eye and she said, Did you miss me? God damn! Took them around, around the, the world. world and dropped their ass off. That's it. It's another episode.